Hello, hello. I'm not on the Wi-Fi. Good evening. I don't know that it'll matter though because the connection's Shouldn't. been good. <clears throat> hello, hello. How are y'all tonight? Good Sunday evening. It's a little better. Hello, good Sunday evening. Um, hello friends. Hey Emma, Brian Day, and Melissa. How are y'all tonight? There's Sam Phillips. Um, hi, hi. Hello. Oh, Caroline's coming to say hey. <laughs> Stop screaming. Are we screaming? <laughs> um, hello, Barnes. <clears throat> How's everybody tonight? We hope y'all are having a good evening. Um, we are good. We are, well, yeah, now it's like, anyway, it's all good. Y'all can look at us a little bit crooked. Um, I feel like I probably have pizza in my mouth. In my teeth. I never checked. So we just had pizza for we dinner. We just took our last bite. We did. You know well, what right is. before. <laughs> right right before, before I dumped my Diet Coke <laughs> all in Caitlin's lap. Yes. Uh, Oops. Anyway. Um, so, yes, we are um, having pizza. We have done that two Sunday nights in a row now. And Chloe has suggested we make that a Sunday night um, tradition of sorts is that we just get pizza. Uh, and we tried a local pizza place. Um, so the place we tried tonight, it's called Rendezvous Pizza. But Kevin walked back in. I wish I could show you. I'm going to post a picture on my stories when we get done. The size of the slices and the size of the boxes. Large. Sorry they to were massive. Were stuck. Um, okay, <laughs> Daddy can unstick it later. Um, just don't push on it. Uh, so anyway, it's... Um, oh, he's tilting us again. Sorry, that was so, bothering me. That pizza, um, it was this massive box and massive New York slices. So we'll post a picture. But it was pretty good. So, anywho. When uh, three slices of pizza slam me full, then you know it's big pieces of pizza. Yep, there you go. So anyway, well, we are in Oklahoma City. Um, and Boomer Sooner. I think that's what they say around here. Jesse's story can correct me. <sighs> Yes, so we got Oklahoma City on uh, Friday. Friday, yes. Uh, we actually only had to drive one little three-hour drive this week, which was super nice. It had been a couple weeks since we had a Saturday um, with no school and no plans, just kind of hang out. So that was what we did yesterday. Um, sorry, we're shaking as the girls walk by. But the girls are walking around shaking the house. Yes, so anyway, we um, enjoyed our Saturday, got set up on Friday. Uh, amidst the wind, man, Oklahoma a wind, is a, a windy, windy place. place. Caroline, what are you doing, dear? Eating pudding. Okay, well, that now you should be all situated, so go have a seat. Um, so, yes, very windy. We got all set up and situated, and um, yeah, we're settled in for a weekend in Oklahoma. We, um, got, up, got up Saturday late mid-morning and set, just kind of sat around, did some stuff, and decided, I think Caroline decided she was hungry, so we made some pancakes. She made pancakes, we made French toast. And in the midst of that, if you saw in our stories, there was a tornado siren that went off um, that made us double, think, double check real quick. And Casey had seen on the uh, information for the RV park that they do in the area they do a tornado siren every saturday at noon so yep. fortunately she had seen that otherwise we would have been thinking um go take shelter yeah, we had bunkers. just had friends yeah, we had just had friends in um, arkansas that had gone through um, the tornadoes that hit there hit right in their area their church is a center for the disaster relief efforts that are going on there and um, so that was fresh on our minds. So pray for the folks of Arkansas. Jacksonville, Arkansas is where good friends are. But, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Dallas last week, I'm trying to think what's a good weekly recap. It's one of the, one of the most interesting things and no, we weren't, what? I was you thinking know? you were going to talk about church. We talked about church last week. Um, yes, I was going to say just kind of a recap of our week. Uh, one of the interesting things that we've been asked several times along the way um sometimes in some of our contact at the north american mission board by other people but one question we've been asked uh, several times is just how many um 
what's the right word? What's like, our interaction been like yes, with the so. international um, community, the multi-ethnic congregations, um, or the other, I guess, other language groups, that kind yes, of thing? Yes, where English is a second language. Um, and so we had come across a few along the way and had told them that, but it was so interesting because Dallas ended up being a place where that was really emphasized um, and where that was kind of came to the forefront for us. Uh, we ended up getting to have lunch with a couple from that was originally from Mexico, and so they have planted a Spanish-speaking church. Um, then we had dinner with a man that was from the Philippines, pastor from the Philippines, so he has a Filipino-speaking church, or I guess, is that the language? Filipino? Sure. Or some, anyway. And then Kevin got to have dinner with a nut, or meet I just, with. I just met with met at with. the church um, a pastor from Burma, so a Burmese pastor. So it was interesting just the way that kind of worked out over the span of a few days, because it was really just kind of a big, full picture of um, in a sense, what heaven's going to be like, and just the whole, yeah. the whole idea that the na the nations are really coming to America. Um, we got to try Filipino food yeah. for the first time. Um, tomorrow night, I'll be having dinner with a pastor, and we'll be eating at a Nepalese restaurant. Um, he is not Nepalese, but um, I forget where he said he was from. Um, Bangladesh and Bengali food. They didn't have in Norman, Oklahoma, where he is from. Uh, but he said that there was a Nepalese restaurant, so we're going to get to try that um, tomorrow it was, night. It was interesting, though, you know, as we think about all of the different um, ethnic groups that we've encountered across the United States and just the thought that the nations are coming to America. Uh, it was interesting to hear um, the, the Filipino pastor, his name was Dexter, and it was so interesting to hear Dexter talk about um, just the idea of missionaries coming from other places to America, other countries to America, and then going back to um, back home to their homelands to help spread the gospel, to come to America to spread the gospel, and then take that back. And he shared with us he was a third generation, or he was he the one that was a first generation? He was first generation. I think. Yes, because yes. he had come to, um, he had heard the gospel and then ended up sharing it with his parents, right? And sports camps are a big part of his background. Mm -hmm. He played basketball growing up and then um, heard the gospel, I believe, at a, at a basketball camp. And now that's a big part of his ministry now. And um, he tries to find just pockets of interest is what he calls them. And finding pockets of interest with people, and basketball is one of those interest areas of his and so it's easy to connect with people on that level and um, that's really how their church got started in the area that it is was through just an open gym that they were doing um, on a regular basis so now they're meeting at that church in a Sunday school room um, kind of a big multi-purpose room I guess that they're able to meet in and so it's it's neat to see how you know, we've said this before, the nations are coming to America, and we've seen that. You, all, We've all heard that. We've seen that on a different level through our time uh, meeting with pastors yeah. and hearing about different areas in our country and the numbers at which they're coming. Um, these, these guys also mentioned how it's much easier to reach that first generation, um, you know, refugees as they come to uh, America when they get here. Oftentimes, they're easier to reach at that point. Um, those second and third generation, people that are born here and then their children are born here, um, they get more and more difficult to reach, just like people that are here all the time. They're often more difficult to reach as well. But those first generation refugees, <laughs> as they get here, they're searching. They want to they wanna experience new things, and they're open to new things. And so the, the gospel takes root very quickly oftentimes in those individuals. Just humbling and, and good reminder to, you know, he, he talked about, you know, countries that are sending their, sending believers to America as missionaries. Um, and, you know, so it just really is, you know, the gospel isn't, um, does the, the gospel doesn't have um, <clears throat> limitations or isn't um, bound by certain ethnic groups. You know, the gospel is for everybody. And so it's just a good reminder as we um, met with and talked to and 
spoke with all these people from all you know different languages different dialects different groups different places in the world um it ended up being just really neat the way it all happened kind of in one week so yeah it was um refreshing just to be around some folks that um you know they're they're having to use different methods they're um one the one pastor jose he would set up in the walmart parking lot with his yeah. truck and he had a sign that he put across the side of his truck how can i pray for you and people would stop and people would see his sign and stop and ask questions share concerns with him um, he made t-shirts and more t-shirts that said crazy for jesus yeah, crazy for and um you know just <clears throat> any way just, any way you can to reach people and um, he was doing that and it was exciting to hear stories of how people were coming to faith through his simple acts of obedience and um, we can all do that we can all take steps of obedience whatever that looks like in our context yeah continue to pray for these pastors um, you know I think in, in both instances I don't know about the, your last meeting but in the two that I get got to meet um, I, one of the things that I think we could sense um, heaviness is just the they were both in by in full-time um, they were bivocational so they had a full-time job as well as pastoring um, a group of people and I think they both sense just the heaviness of responsibility for doing it well and trying to figure out how to make it work yeah, you trying know, to, with their time with their financial resources yeah. just how to make it all work and the third pastor was a full-time student at the seminary and um, felt led to do this kind of um, during his schooling and so same same situation that was his main prayer request was just time yeah. that he would manage his time well that um, between his full-time <clears throat> studies his family being a good spouse being a good parent um, and then leading the church and being a good pastor it's a it's a balance that we all have to play in some way or another um, but they felt they feel that very heavy being um, bivocational in their in their work and in their ministry told, yeah. so another um, cool thing that we got the opportunity to do was Kevin and I got the opportunity to connect on Thursday morning and sit and chat and catch up um, with Steve and Debbie Wilson, um, some of you, some of our Tifton people remember them from, they have a ministry called Marriage Matters Now, and they came and spoke at Northside. A couple times, um, did couple, marriage one time, parenting mm -hmm. another time. Uh, and so we had not seen them in several years, and it was just a joy and delight to get to catch up and talk about what's, you know, catch them up on our lives, hear about what's going on in their lives and their ministry. We found this cute little coffee shop that was not far away that we got to hang out at and so that was a highlight of our week for us a good point in our week that yeah we they were headed to opening day at the rangers stadium and so it worked out great that we could meet for coffee before they went and met friends and went to the baseball game there yeah. there were people everywhere downtown it was really interesting for us not being really baseball people and not really living in a baseball mm -hmm. town or close to one um it was interesting to see the amount of tailgating yeah, I, I told for a Kevin, baseball game. I didn't even know if people did that. I had no idea. I told Casey, I don't know if this is just an opening day thing or if they do this all the time. But yeah, it was I a, don't know either. a three o'clock game and there were people everywhere throwing baseballs. And This was at like one o'clock when we came yeah. down through there. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, it looked like they were. It looked like a college football, football yeah. game to me. I thought yeah. maybe they were starting early. Uh, and so then we squeaked out of town. So the, um, the big baseball field, it's brand new to. Um, I don't know if they played. They may have played one season. One in. season, I think. Um, it's called Globe Life, Globe Life Field, I think maybe or Globe, Sounds right. something like that. Um, and then there was the AT and T Stadium was kind of right next door. Um, the house that Jimmy built. <clears throat> well, and then Taylor Jerry, Swift was not Jimmy. Jerry Jones. Yeah. Then Taylor Swift was there on Friday night as we were leaving, so it was going to be a big weekend down there. <laughs> the girls, the girls just out of curiosity, they're like, "Let's look and see how much tickets are." And they found the cheapest ticket they could find, very top row of the entire stadium. AT&T Stadium's pretty big. Top row, $504 for one ticket. That was resale, so anyway. Yeah. Crazy, Listen on crazy. Spotify or something, but. Yeah, and up there, you could, I mean, you couldn't even have seen Taylor Swift. You would watch the no. screen the whole time. Anyway, it was interesting. Um, so this morning, yeah. we got to go to, Refuge. On, I'm going to say the wrong thing, yes. Refuge Church. 
Refuge. It'd been rest, restoration, refuge. Last week was redemption. Redemption, redemption city, I think. Yeah, a so. bunch of R's. Yeah, so today was Refuge Church um, on the, you said we went to the west side of Oklahoma City? Southwest side. Mustang, Oklahoma. I thought it was Yukon. Yukon is their P.O. box. Mustang is the address of the elementary school where they meet. Oh, Canadian, there you go. Canadian okay. County? Is that what you said? Canadian something County or something like that. Like that. Yeah. So they met in this um, really nice, nice looking, new, new uh, fairly new elementary school. Um, so in the gym. So we were excited to get to go to church there. One um, really cool thing about this morning, we got there, we're... we're beginning the worship service and we noticed that there were bags all across the front of the stage we really didn't know why um, and as he began um, preaching he, he shared about the bags and what the bags were there for and the school that they meet in had identified all the children in the school that needed new shoes and all those kids were identified and the church through their generosity took up money and went out and bought shoes for every kid in the school that needed shoes. I mean, how many bags do you think were up there? I was thinking like 75, 75 maybe. 75, yes. Um, and it, it was so cool because it coordinated. So he's been in a, this was week four, and he's ending it next week on Easter. So it's a five-week sermon series. Let me see if I can get this right. I was going right. to say, if you can remember um, this, that's great. But something about know. learning their views by trying on their shoes. Something or like that. Learning new views, learning new by, trying views by, trying by trying on shoes. There and so the graphic was really cool. It was a big um, pair of like high tops and it had shoes across it. And that was the tagline, learning new new views by trying on shoes, something like that. Uh, and so he has, he had done, um, today was the fourth sermon about, and he would bring, it was such a clever idea because he had a bag that he brought on the stage with him. And that's kind of how he was just in his normal stuff. And then he pulled out a pair of shoes to kind of uh, introduce the sermon and sat down and put them on and then talked about uh, his Yeah, and so today character. it was boots and he talked about, you know, boots, you think <clears throat> of different things, but he used the boots to tie into the centurion who approached Jesus about healing his servant. Jesus said, you know, he's a long way away. And he said, you don't even have to go, just say the word and we know that it'll be done. And so he talked about um, authority and how a lot of us don't like to be under authority. We like to be the authority, but um, <clears throat> we talked about he he kind of gave a hint as to what he was going to do next week, and he said, you know, guess what kind of shoes I'm going to be trying on next week? Jesus shoes. And so we all kind of chuckled as we were riding away. We were discussing the service like we usually do, and so we um, put out our predictions of what his Jesus shoes would, what kind of shoes he would bring to put on. Sandals. Chacos. Tevas. <laughs> so barefoot. I said I thought he was going to be barefoot. So we shall see. So now we're going to have to tune in next week online. Say, we're going to have to go back to their Facebook page and watch the service and see what he puts but on. They, so. they do a podcast. They don't do it. Oh, well, or you could just, you're just, I'm just going to have to ask him Kevin's at lunch having, tomorrow. I was about to say, you're having lunch with him tomorrow. You just need to ask him for a preview um, yep. and tell him that we all place our, hedged our bets. Hey, so. in the comments below, if you were <clears throat> That's wearing right. Jesus shoes, what would you wear? What would your Jesus shoes look yeah, like? What would they be? Here we go. Air Jordans? No, that's, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> your Air Force Ones. Yep. Um, so tell us what your Jesus shoes would be. That's great. Um, so anyway, that was church this morning. Kevin's excited to get to know that guy's name is Logan, and Kevin's excited to get to know him a little bit better tomorrow over lunch. Um, Kevin's busy this week. Yep. Well, and the girls and I have one day, so Kevin has um, strapping sandals. There you go. Uh, Kevin has lunch and dinner tomorrow. Um, and then on Tuesday, we're really excited to um, get to go to the Oklahoma Center, uh, Oklahoma City New Ministry Center. So the Send Relief. You've heard us talk some about the Send Relief Ministry Centers. So Send Network is the church planning aspect of the North American Mission Board. Send Relief is a lot of the humanities and um, <clears throat> different uh, relief efforts. And so there is a brand new center here in uh, Oklahoma City that just opened... January, January December, January. And so we've been in contact with the journeymen. We're really excited. We're all going to get to go there on Tuesday morning, get a tour of the center, help them with some clothes sorting project that they have going on. They're doing a Vietnamese outreach. Uh, I think it's a ESL class for Vietnamese. And we're going to be able to pop in on that. And yep. it's going to be so, interesting. We're, we're excited. interested to see uh, what all they have going on. They, 
Many of the ministry centers have spring break, break trips that are going on right now. This center is so new, they're not doing any trips until summer. So we're going to be able to jump in and help out um, and, while they've got some and stuff And then going they on. promised to the director of the center and the journeymen, we've been in contact with them, and they've promised us some um, local eats for lunch on Tuesday. They said they wanted to take us to I don't some even OKC know what, places. I don't so. even know what local is for Oklahoma City. I know chicken fried steak is one of the things that is a local we'll delicacy. See. Fried pies. No. So anyway, uh-huh. we're excited. It's going to be a good week. We are going to hope to not get blown away. Um, but there, everybody's talking about All right. Their, Stevie Walker just said Birkenstocks, Birkenstocks, but I saw his name pop up. Y'all be praying <laughs> with us um, tomorrow for Stevie. He's got a big... Uh, surgery procedure um, that's going on yeah. has the potential to really make a big impact on his health. So, Stevie, we're praying for you. Indeed. We love you, and we'll be praying tomorrow that everything goes well and that recovery is quick. No surprises for tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, Birkenstocks, and then uh, I think it was Steve and Debbie said um, tennis shoes to keep running after people. That's right. So. We shall see. That was I saw those as they scrolled by, and then I think I missed the rest. But flippers could walk on water. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, thanks for coming and tuning in, you guys. Um, as usual, uh, follow, share this video. That helps other people know um, uh, that they can join in on Sunday nights and hear about our week. Uh, any comments that um, or questions that you have, feel free to put in the comments or send us a message, and we'll try to answer those on Sunday nights. Um, if you have anything going on that we can pray for you about, please be sure to let us know. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday night. Yeah, next week we'll have Where will we be coming four, from? Four more meetings. We'll be in Albuquerque, Albuquerque. New Mexico next it, week. It is Easter next week, and we debated whether we were going to go live. But I think we are still going to um, go live next week because most people will be home and settled from their Easter celebrations. So we'll still go go live. Um, It'll be six for us next week. That's right. Still, we're gonna, still eight Eastern, but... Yeah, we're going to lose Six another o'clock. time zone next week. So um, anyway, but we'll be in Albuquerque. So anyway, y'all have a fabulous week. Thanks for jumping in on and chatting with us. And we'll see you next Sunday night. Have a good evening. See ya.